Good morning, everybody. There is no end to education. It is not that you read a book, pass an exam, and finish with education. The whole of life, from the moment you are born to the moment you die, is a process of learning, said Jiddu Krishnamurti. Each day is a blessing, and we learn a new school skill. This national level student development program, which offers free online certificate course in effective English language development is organized by BVN Degree College, Bengaluru. BVN Degree College, a unit of BVN Trust, is one of the pioneer institutions in Bangalore, providing academically excellent value-based education for girl students. Since its inception, Vasavi Vidyaniketan Degree College has pioneered the discipline of commerce. Our objective is to provide quality education to girl students and empower them. The college offers graduation course in commerce and has sustained its glorious track record all through the years. The institute is located in one of the posh locations of Bengaluru, which makes it easily accessible and safe for girl students. VVN Degree College, affiliated to Bengaluru City University, has created an indelible mark for upholding Indian culture and imparting quality education with techno-savvy corporate training programs to enable the students to be confident, responsible citizens with positive thinking and right orientation of mind to face life with all its opportunities and challenges. At VVN Degree College, Vani Vilas Road, VV Puran, Bengaluru in Karnataka, we offer BCom degree along with certificate courses for all the students. The certificate courses offered along with BCom are Computer Fundamentals, MS Office, Tally ERP, Coral Draw, Photoshop, GST, and in Soft Skills, Communication Skills, Soft Skills, Campus to Corporate Training are provided. On this 10th day of Effective English Language Development Online course, I, Prasanna Urpika, HOD of English at VVN Degree and uh, Degree College, and the coordinator of this National Student uh, Development Program, am privileged to the college Tipturu in Karnataka. He has put in for over 32 years of experience in the teaching field. He has also served as a guest faculty in the post-graduation centers of Bangalore, Mysore, and Tumkur universities. Professor Dr. Uday Ravi Shastri has been guiding PhD scholars from several universities of South India. Professor Dr. Uday Ravi Shastri has presented more than 35 research papers in various national level and international conferences, both in India and abroad. He has served as an associate professor in English in Al Fateh University, Tripoli, Libya, for an year. Savi, Savi English Savi and Mojigagi English are his two volumes published in Canada in the Recreational Linguistic Series, and the third volume is awaiting publication. He has edited a book on resistance studies, an anthology of research articles on subaltern studies. 
Professor Dr. Uday Ravi Shastri is in the editorial board of the journal Research Scholar and International Referred Journal. Dr. Uday Ravi Shastri is a recipient of the state level BOLT award for the year 2003 for his excellence in teaching. He is an elected fellow of the Royal Asiatic Society of England and Ireland. Professor Dr. Uday Ravi Shastri is the only IAO certified teacher in entire Tumkur University. Currently, he is pursuing his postdoctoral research in applied linguistics. Professor Dr. Uday Ravi Shastri has set for a quiz program in 2013. On behalf of management, chief executive for academics and administration, principal faculty members, I extend a hearty welcome to Professor Uday Ravi Shastri as a resource person for this national level student development program. I also extend a warm welcome to um, Sri Arun Kumar B.S., President of BBN Trust, CAIS Prasad, Secretary General of BBN Trust, Chief Executive for Academics and Administration, Dr. K. Sheshamurthy, Principal, Professor G. Venugopa, and all the faculty members and students at BBN Degree College. I also extend a very hearty warm welcome to all our participants who log in on time and stay till the end, taking an active part in all the sessions. Wishing you all a happy day and a fruitful, productive session. I hand over the digital platform to Professor Dr. Uday Ravi Shastri, who would talk to us another one hour and 15 minutes on language learning through logology. Welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, hope I can begin. Yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, good morning to you all. My today's topic is learning language through logology. You may be wondering what this term logology means. I just wanted to make the title look very technical and serious. It is not really so technical or serious. It simply means recreational linguistics. Okay. I personally believe that uh, real learning can be done in a more informal and friendly environment. And language is not just a medium of communication. It can be a source of recreation too. In the process of providing recreation, you can learn a bit and such things stay longer in our active memory. After this 10 long days of serious learning, you may treat this lecture as a comic relief. You can just relax for the next 55 minutes or one hour and listen to what I say. In fact, I wanted to have an interactive session with you. And I wish to hear your answers whenever I ask you certain questions. But later, I realized that it is not possible in this situation, in this platform. But uh, never mind, sir, uh, they can type their answers in the chat box. This we tried but, the other day. Uh, I'm not so tech savvy as to look into the chat box and look into my script and yes, uh, yes. keep explaining, do, doing ambidextrous like things. I may not be so adept. So Possibly. I would rather not try it. Yes, yes. Okay. So yes. shall I begin with my uh, screen sharing? Yes, sir. Screen sharing is enabled. You can. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Uh, not yet. Uh, yeah. 
Yes, yes. You have to make it full screen. Yeah, ma'am. Huh. It is full screen. It's not yet full screen. Oh my God. Down uh, there you have got to. Uh, yes, yes, exactly. Yes. Now it's full it's screen. It's full screen now? now? Post full screen, again it became uh, the usual mode. Yeah, yeah, I had done it from the beginning. Now it is full screen, right? Not yet. Ha, huh. now it is. Now it is. Okay, ma'am. So, uh, well, learning language through logology. The term logology is the field of um, recreational linguistic activity. Okay. Uh, that encompasses a wide variety of word games and word play. In fact, you have another session at the end of this series, which concentrates on the word games and word play. So I have just tried to concentrate only on the basics, the fundamentals. This will be an entry into the coming lecture. And you should not confuse this term logology to the study of logos. Uh, though this is a very interesting and irresistible thing, I would very briefly touch upon this particular uh, topic and then come back to my uh, subject. Just can you look at these uh, logos? They are all very familiar to you. You must have uh, got certain things home through this Amazon.com. And it needs a lot of intellect, sharpness and scientific uh, technical aptitude to create a logo like this. I'll just explain a few of them and get back to the thing. I have 50, 45 slides to share with you within the next 55 or one hour. So I have to rush through. The first one, see, you have, you find an arrow mark here in this logo. It goes from A to Z. It means that they sell everything from A to Z. And moreover, you find this uh, arrow mark in a curve, which is the smile of the customer. The, it assures the smile on the face of the customer. Okay. And then FedEx is a courier service, as you know. And what is hidden, what is hidden here in this is this arrow mark. Can you see this white arrow mark? They have so tactfully included this white arrow mark by bringing these two letters together. So they mean to say that their services is as fast as the shot of an arrow. And then you must be very familiar with this uh, logo. Uh, mostly, uh, most of you who stay in Bangalore could probably be more familiar with this. This is Baskin Robbins, your famous ice cream company. And these two letters have two different tones of colors. And in between, you find this number 31, actually, which are the parts of these letters B and R, but actually it appears to you as though it is 31. What is 31? Baskin Robbins provides you with 31 different flavors of ice cream, okay? And then you have this Goodwill, it's an NGO of America. Uh, uh, it's a non-profitable, a charitable organization, you find the half face of a smiling child, but actually it is the letter G, the initial letter of this goodwill company, G. Okay, and then coming to this Spartan Golf Club. Actually, this is the trajectory of a golf shot, a person uh, using his golf stick to hit the ball. It is the, this is the elbow, uh, of a person, uh, of the player. The other picture, the same picture, you can interpret it in another way. It is the Greek hero, uh, a warrior having that helmet, the Sparta, uh, the Spartan helmet. This is the head and this elbow of the golf. Can you see this? The skyscraper, the famous skyscrapers of the uh, city in New York. Okay. Uh, this is just to rouse curiosity in you. You can just learn more about logology, but we have nothing to do with logos. Logology is just recreational linguistics. Well, can you see these terms here? ASAP, FYI, LOL, ATM, BRB, AD, BC, AM, PM. 
Can you please tell me the expansion of these terms? And I have two questions. In fact, the expansion of these terms and also what you call them. Well, here are the answers. ASAP is as soon as possible. FYI is for your information. Laugh out loud is LOL. ATM is either automatic teller machine. It is not any time machine. Many people say it is automatic, uh, sorry, any time machine. I, I shall come to that later. Or it can also be interpreted as at the moment, be right back. AD is anno domini. It is not after death. Many people wrongly interpret it as after death. It is anno domini. And then you have BC, before Christ, anti-meridian AM and post-meridian PM. We are wrongly taught these terms as abbreviations in our schools. Please bear in mind, they are not abbreviations. They are called initialisms, initials. Well, if they are initials, what are abbreviations? Well, these are abbreviations. Abbreviation, the term abbreviation comes from the word brief. What has been made brief is an abbreviation. It is also called truncation. Here, N stands for the word noun, ADJ, the initial letters. There are different types of abbreviations. You ha I have given you some three or four of those examples here. I if you follow the first few letters, if you use the first few letters, it is uh, a type of abbreviation. N stands for noun, ADJ stands for adjectives. And you have the first and the last letters here in these examples, HR, our, SR, senior. And you have only a few important letters from the word like T and private PBT. Only chosen the important consonants and made it the abbreviation. The uh, names of the weeks and the months. Ma'am, no? am I audible yeah. to you? There was no, connection what? there. Yeah, there was some connectivity problem, I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, suddenly in the middle, we couldn't hear you anything. Uh, yeah, yeah. We couldn't hear you anything. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, let so, me continue. Uh, this is the uh, disadvantage even, of being in a rural place like this. Place, yes. I yes. just can't help it. I'm so sorry. Uh -huh. uh, shall I continue? Yes. So you continue from there, ASP and all that. Uh, yeah, yeah. The long yeah, form yeah. you are explaining because they couldn't yeah, even see the screen clearly. Oh. Okay, okay. So you could start. Now it's visible and audible, ma'am? Yes, yes. Audible. Okay. I was mentioning about LB. Why do you use LB for uh, pounds? Actually, it's a Latin term, libra. 
you must have seen this in the zodiac also libra is a balance balance has something to do with the unit of measure well min for minutes ft for foot or feet and mrs or uh, miss uh, for misses and ruv for reverend they are titles well then you have something very interesting called acronyms an acronym is an initialism pre pronounced as a word for example so, you have h a l excuse pardon me, ppt is not to be seen your screen you have to enable oh your uh, yeah i have sharing. enabled it ha ah, maybe because in between hmm. you had lost the connection yeah 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 ha ah. so again you have got to enable uh, i mean share oh, the screen oh i see ah, yes yeah ma'am now is it available um, yes, uh, visible yes it's yes yes now make it yeah, full, I will full, make screen. full screen yes yeah yes sir perfect oh, yeah okay what it, huh. hmm. uh, yes now it's available I mean, uh, yes, visible yes. ma'am visible can you visible. hear okay. yes very clear and uh, well acronyms i was telling you about the acronyms acronym is a is an initialism that is pronounced as a word i was giving you the example of hal hindustan aeronautics limited is initialized as hal and you got you don't pronounce it as hal but isro isro indian space research organization it is an initialism but you use it as a term as a word isro such terms are called acronyms and so also you have here unicef united nations children's education fund scuba is self contained underwater breathing apparatus laser radar uh, such um, they are all acronyms and i think you are familiar with this word tips you must have paid tips also in hotels without knowing what it actually means tips is not a word it is an acronym it is to ensure prompt service if you don't frequent the hotel if you never intend going to that hotel again there's no point in giving tips but still people give tips as a uh, prestige issue anyway pin is postal index number well then you have something called reverse acronym acronyms are abbreviations rather initialisms intentionally done and reverse acronyms are the brain work of some person um, which was invented later on it so it is called a backronym also the term has two names so reverse acronym is a synonymous for, word for backronym for example you all know the brand name that sells sports goods the very famous brand name adidas adidas is actually a portmanteau word portmanteau word is a word formed by the combination of two words uh, the name of the founder adolf dassler is combined the initial uh, part of each binomial nomenclature adolf and dassler is combined to form adidas but later on some brainy fellow interpreted it as all day i dream about sports which initially was not intended intended so also you have <coughs> sorry posh and golf and cop cop is a police as you all know uh, that has been interpreted as constable on patrol and uh, ladies must please excuse me some frustrated husband has invented this wife was just an ordinary word but they have made it an acronym a reverse acronym each letter standing for a word worries invited forever <laughs> i'm sorry for that this is just for humor okay and then you have something called recursive acronym we unknowingly repeat certain words when you say atm machine hey that atm machine is atm machine m itself stands for machine and uh, what does it mean when you say atm machine automatic teller machine machine he is from the cid department 
he is not from the cid department he is from the ci department c stands for criminal i stands for investigation d stands for department why should you repeat the word department so also pin number do you have that pin number postal index number number okay so also hiv and visa we move on to the next one this is an anagram you will be very familiar with this word if you are in the habit of uh, solving crossword puzzles particularly the one that you have in hindu has a lot of anagrams what is an anagram an anagram is a type of word play the result of rearranging the letters of a word or phrase to produce a new word or phrase for example you have the word spot spot you uh, scramble it you rearrange the letters and you will get words like stop and pots and post you can form several such words such word is called an anagram okay Uh, uh, when uh, the other lectures were going on i was just uh, watching the chat box some students were getting restless some were um, really very critical about that some would say so what if some of you ask me so what i don't have an answer to give you i just want to say that language is not just for communication it is it can be looked at as a source of recreation also such things such very interesting concepts will sharpen your wits and make you more uh, attracted to the language and you will have to fall in love with the language and the more intimate you are with the language the easier uh, it will be for you to learn the language efficiently well anagrams well here are a few animals hidden in this anagrams can you please find them out god uh, how i wish i had seen the chat box also well uh, there is a dog in the god p p e p there is an ape t a r you have a rat arm you have a ram jai shri ram okay and then you have bomb within the bomb you have lamb and then you have act what do you what animal can you find here a cat and a bat in the tab and a bear the pronounce it is a homophonous word and you have a wolf in the word flow okay and anagrams don't stop here in fact some person has written a play a short play having conversation between people each sentence being an anagram that is the limit now here you have a gentleman if you rearrange these letters it can be formed into elegant man you try it 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 is possible it is true and uh, look how wisely this has been arranged even the meaning is almost similar a gentleman and elegant man debit card is bad credit 11 plus 2 you rearrange all these letters and it will be 12 plus 1 11 plus 2 and 12 plus 1 are the same hot water worth tea and so on goes the other examples and the last one is more interesting again uh, women folk should excuse me mother in law is can be rearranged as woman hitler okay well and you have few more examples for anagrams school master is an anagram of the classroom the countryside no city does there the detectives detectives so also we have other examples and the last two again clint eastwood you know the famous film actor uh, the hollywood actor rearranging that you will get old west action it is this cowboy series clint eastwood is known for his cowboy hero uh, roles astronomers no more stars well then you have something called palindrome palindrome is a word it could be a phrase or a number or a sequence of symbols or elements whose meaning may be interpreted the same way in either uh, either in the forward or in the reverse direction for example you have that word malayalam read it from left to right or from right to left it is the same word here you have simpler words d and i even in kannada you have chamacha kittaki 
such words are there and you have more such examples here syndrome words race car see you go backwards r a c e c a r race car right this way or that way is the same level pip rotor civic pop nun radar madam it is not just single words alone but you can put the words together into a word phrase that again has the same effect p of course you should ignore the spaces in between and you will have to create space where you do not have and then you have the uh, term a man a plan a canal panama a man a plan a canal panama on either sides okay you have going uh, stretching that a bit further stretching the metaphor a bit further you have sentences here do give see god do give see god don't don't bother much about the meaning it conveys but the way in which it is arranged is more important than the meaning it conveys was it eliot's toilet i saw murder for a jar of red rum all these are reversible you can read it from left to right or from right to left okay then we move on to a bigger more interesting palindrome sentences niagara oh roar again just as our joke falls there were days when the flow the inflow of the water was becoming less and less then such a term was invented niagara oh roar again can be read from left to right or right to left it will be the same rise to word sir able was i er i saw elba here er is before okay so these are all uh, examples for palindromes and then you have tongue twisters tongue twisters or technically alliterations tongue twister is a figure of speech in fact as a figure of speech the name it has is alliteration and you find tongue twisters in almost all the languages uh with the little knowledge of the local languages i know i would tell you first uh, in kannada arali marada buda tali roda deradale aitu kage pukka gobe pukka and there are several other examples in kannada and in tamil you have yar techa chattai tata techa chattai if i say slowly it will be easy for me but if i uh, say it fast or repeat it several times then your tongue really slips telugu laksha bakshalu bakshinche lakshayyaku okka bakshamo lakshama and in hindi you have this kacha papad pakka papad there are several other we, we shall see what we have in english she sells sea shells in the sea shore the alternating letters of the uh, initial sounds sir sure sir sure makes your tongue twist uh, makes it difficult to twist your tongue and there are other examples here how much wood would a wood chuck chuck if a wood chuck would chuck wood peter piper pick the peck of pickled peppers chester cheetah chews a chunk of cheap cheddar cheese Harry had a horrible headache and hated to hear Henry howl. Six slippery snails slid slowly seaward. See, we used to be taught Amarakosha when we were young children. Our grandfathers would make us sit before us. We would know. We would not know why Amarakosha was to be. It, it is uh, Amara Anirjara Deva Vibhasura. We were just made to chant that as we were made to taught. tables two times tables three times tables when you learn that you will not know the use of that afterwards you will get the advantage you will your vocabulary will be enriched so also here if you just pronounce this for the pleasure of it your tongue becomes sharpen you you uh, you will have no difficulty in pronouncing words easily and uh, this term this particular uh, tongue twister is supposed to be the toughest in english the sixth six shakes six sheep is sick slowly you can say no yeah everyone can say it very slowly but when you read it fast or when you repeat it you will have the problem anyway 
Now we move on to a very, in, actually, logology has to do, has something to do with the games, word games. I restrict my uh, thing only to this, and I will not get into the crossword or the ribble uh, or the um, uh, scrabble and such other word games. Uh, this is a very interesting puzzle. Ribbles is an allusional device that uses pictures to represent words or parts of the word. You already have certain terms known, and that is shown in the form of a picture. Well, can you interpret this? We have three words, aid, 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 and this arrow mark indicates towards the first word. So what could this be? It is first aid, okay? Um, if you have guessed it right, I'm very happy. Um, well, we'll move on to the next one. You have, this. you can't just make out what it is. Actually, this is a combination of two words. Can you see these three letters in the middle? M-A-N, man. Where is this placed? Look at the other two, uh, the, the letters on either sides. M-O-O-N. So this is man in moon. It could be Neil Armstrong or Yuri Gagarin. Okay. And then you have this one. Got, 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 got. And hero. There are, uh, the word got is repeated four times and hero ten times. What could this be? Forgot ten hero. Forgotten hero. Well, um, and then this is my favorite uh, ribbon puzzle. Can you guess this word? Some letters are missing. If you insert letters here, it could be operation. And so, uh, try to find the letters that, that, that are missing. P-A-I-N. P-A-N is pain. So you don't have pain. So what could this be? It is a painless operation. Okay. Well, then we'll move on to this one. It has colors also. B, 10, and the colors are black and blue. I think uh, you are familiar with this term, bitten black and blue. Oh, that boy was bitten black and blue by the principal, by the teacher. See, just this visual will give you the idiom. So, beaten black and blue. And here, these two have the same technique. Um, the first one, the letter four is inserted within a word stance. For in stance. For in stance, for example. And then you have, what is this? You ignore the first C, take, uh, start from the second C, C-A-U-G-H-T, caught. Where is this word caught, caught? It is caught within this letter, A-C-T. So it is caught in act. That is caught red-handed. Well, you have this word, M-O-O-N is very clearly visible because of its color. And once is inserted within this word, and it is once in a blue moon. Once in a blue moon. Oh, uh, most students come to college. Uh, I mean, uh, at least some students come to the college once in a blue moon. You must have heard teachers saying, oh, you have come once in a blue moon. Well, here you have this one. What is repeated several times. Some of them are in black. Some of them are in white. This is a riddle, in fact. What is black and white and red all over? What is in black and white? Yes, you find these uh, words in black and white. And all over is shown in red. Actually, when you say what is in black and white and red, black and white, the color, the names of the colors will make, prepare your mind to assume that the next word is also a, mentioned to a color. But red is not R-E-D red, it is R-E-A-D red. Okay? Uh, it, the answer is a newspaper. 
newspaper is in black and white it's a technical term i think it's a jargon uh, what do you say it's an idiomatic usage i want it in black and white black and white is in writing newspaper is in writing and you read it all over i don't know if you get the hang of it anyway look at this what is written upward and must is written downward so this is the gravitational law what goes up must come down okay what goes up must come down this one sorry rest it's like a fraction it's like a fraction rest and a you are you are under arrest okay here can you try this give 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 get 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 four gives are there four gets are there forgive and forget this one is in reverse order so it is back back to square one and look at this shut is typed on the top and sit is typed at the bottom what could this be shut up and sit down so so you have here uh, a word a friend is there a friend is inserted within the word need so a friend in need this is a friend in need here you have these letters or i when, when this is an i you have since you have several i you can say ice and these letters are very bold and this is very thin so you can call it thin ice what is on top of it is skate so this is skating on thin ice skating on thin ice is an idiomatic expression i think you know it, which means taking a risk being very um, doing some act of a risky uh, thing okay it's like a mathematical uh, it's like a, a sum i should not have used that term uh, okay mary plus mary plus this term plus has a synonym that is sum so it is summary sum mary this is again the word fire is embedded within gin fire engine fire engine this reminds you of your kindergarten what you have learnt in primary school m which letter could be there uh, could be missing here m i c m i c m i c eyes are not there if you don't have eyes what do you call blind and so there are three eyes three blind mice okay three blind mice and then we come uh, come to ambigram i shall not dwell uh, much upon this because this has nothing to do with the language as such this is just a visual effort of an artist ambigram is what you uh, devise design that can be seen Uh, as a lateral inversion or a vertical inversion ambigram you just turn this and see you can look at it from the top or from the bottom it reads the same ambigram so i shall go quickly uh, even this one ambigram new man fantasy see how this letter f is designed it it is actually it could be interpreted as f or y fantasy from left to right or right to left the same there are different letters but it uh, the illusion is formed in such a way that you can read it from either sides fantasy this is wiki and then you have light students who are um, familiar with science albert einstein uh, light is a what is this what is this it's uh it has four letters if you can take it as okay uh, i don't know how to say uh, w a v 
E. Okay? Or take it part by part, you can find P A R T I C L E. Light is a particle or light is a wave. It is ambiguous. And so even this ambigram has devised that one. Okay, now look at the black letters. It is J A M E S, James. And if you look at the white letters hidden embedded within, it is Joyce, James Joyce. And evil, is it evil or good? There is nothing good or bad. Thinking makes it so. See, look at the black letters. It looks as though it is good. Look at the white letters hidden within that. It is evil. Okay. It, it is just a visual technique. It has uh, nothing to do with the language. So I don't want to see. Look at this teaching. The reflection appears to you as learning. L-E-A or learn. And then wicked Mickey. Well, you have this optical illusion. Look at the blue thing. You find I-L-L-U-S-I-O-N. You find that uh, fair color. Um, it is O-P-T-I-C-A-N. Okay. Well, this could interest the youngsters. What did you read this as? Most of you would have read it as I love you. But observe carefully. The first letter, it is not L, it is H, this is A, this is T, E. So be careful. <laughs> well, so with this, we come to the end of the ambigrams and now we come to ambiguity. Ambiguity, uh, the quality of being open to more than one interpretation. It is inexactness. The same sentence, the same words could mean two different meanings. For example, John went to the bank. This is a lexicon. Whether he is or the bank, the river bank where he has. This is a simple example. You will get more. Well, look at this. This is very uh, uh, inter interesting. The chicken is ready to eat. The first meaning, you get it immediately. Your mouth start uh, watering, drooling. Uh, you have a chicken ready, a dressed chicken ready on your table with a fork and a knife, and you are ready to eat the chicken. But the other meaning it conveys is Chicken could be a living creature, a tiny fowl with life, which is trying to eat a small worm. The chicken is ready to eat a worm. So also the ambiguity in these two sentences, these two sentences are similar, but I will take the second, the, the last one. Flying planes could be dangerous or teasing girls could be dangerous. This is more interesting for youngsters. Okay, teaching, uh, teasing girls could be dangerous. What is the meaning that you get immediately? If you tease girls, that could be dangerous for you. The other interpretation is the teasing girls could be, in either case, boys or, I mean, it's dangerous for boys. But the teasing, see, if you add a definite article, the ambiguity is gone. The teasing girls could be dangerous or teasing the girls could be dangerous. Okay, I don't want to read this. This is a bit um, um, offensive. Uh, P S Y C H O T H E or A P I S T. I have deliberately left space between the letters. You can read it as psychotherapist or the other possibility, you read it for yourself. Even the second one, pen is mightier than sword. You interpret it. Uh, using your ingenuity. I don't want to read it out. Well, this is, uh, these are further examples for ambiguity. I saw the man with the binoculars. What ambiguity do you find here? Did you see the man through your binoculars? Or did you see a man holding a binoculars? 
that is the ambiguity they are hunting dogs are they hunting the dogs or is this breed of dogs called hunting dogs well you have free wells free is it a verb why have you caught them allow them to go free free the whales one meaning be cautious the whales are free they are free whales they are not bound okay the next one police help dog to bite victim whom did the police help the dog or the victim police help dog bite victim he did not help the dog to bite a victim he helped the victim who was bitten by a dog he saw that gas can explode okay uh this can is used as a auxiliary model in one one sense one interpretation the other one is gas can taken as a combined word okay turn right here right here or to, towards your right we saw her duck even here a uh, duck is a noun or a verb it makes the ambiguity anyway now we come to the last part of juncture juncture refers to breaks or pauses in speech that indicate words or other grammatical units <coughs> for example grade a if i say grade a it may you may hear it as gray day if i say an ice cream you may hear it as a nice cream why does this happen in the pro in in the written form we leave space in between words but while we speak we do not leave the time interval between the words so it needs a great training for our ears to understand to grasp what the person is saying so uh, what is malapropism to the tongue could be a, a juncture to the ears and you have these junctures what do you call with no eyes you say no idea in fact you do not know the answer you say no idea but it appears it, it, it the listener may hear it as no idea and again he continues what do you call a dead deer with no eyes still no idea okay that's it um so another example for this what is the difference between a cat and a comma one has claws at the end of its paws and the other has paws at the end of a claws i think you could make out the difference between claws and claws the similarity in the pronunciation claws and claws and paws and paws that creates the juncture well this will be the last slide i don't know how you have been receiving it i could not read your chat box you are whether you are getting bored or whether it is interesting to you i don't they are, know they are finding uh, it very interesting oh thank you thank you yes, yes. Uh, some of them are what actually are, sending the answers also to the questions oh, that you oh, have asked okay. what are the three quickest ways of spreading a rumor or a gossip telegram telephone and telewoman you tell a woman and additionally to, to make it go much quicker you say don't tell this to anybody then it goes faster than telegram then it goes faster than telephone okay again three times thrice i have offended women folk i'm sorry <laughs> well so that's it uh, with this i end my uh, talk if you have any questions to ask you can please ask me. it was really a very interesting session um new topic new session it is logology most of them were not aware at all so how could they learn language what are the tips that you would give them yeah actually um 
here i was very particular in introducing a dozen terms i think around 12 terms 12 new terminologies they were introduced here but actually this is the very initial uh, part of logology uh, the next part of that will have see uh, it it helps them as memory hooks in their mind when they learn a term for example uh, the rebus puzzle if you learn an idiom or a phrase through a rebus puzzle that stays in the mind for long it it helps them as a memory hook that's the whole point but they should learn to understand it yeah precisely and uh, okay. the person that the teacher the teacher who uses logology to teach the students Uh, some concepts of grammar should be very sharp he should make a lot of preparation and only introduce such uh, uh, games and such riddles and puzzles that would teach the enlighten the uh, students it's a very challenging task i agree okay okay so could you give some tasks for the students uh, because still we have time now could you oh. give some tasks so that uh, uh, the students would answer and i can bring it to you this answer we'll just oh check i never knew whether... this how much time have okay. i consumed uh, did i finish it fast very fast not much we are left uh, with some okay uh it, it doesn't i don't have it in my ppt what shall i do uh okay. well i will ask my students okay uh, can you can you uh, find the two different meanings in this ambiguity uh, in this ambiguous sentence ship sails tomorrow ship sails tomorrow okay. where is the chat box i yeah students you have got to type yeah. in the uh, chat please, box please please try to answer this Yes. Answer the question. Because now they are used tomorrow. to. Now they are used mm. to typing the answer in the. Yeah. Since a uh, few examples are given, I think they ah. can work on this. Yes. So could you repeat the question again? Ship sails tomorrow. I have typed it in the chat box also. Okay. Okay. We'll give them time. Students. Four minutes. Oh, uh, I can't see the uh, comments here in this chat box. Probably it is there in the uh, YouTube. Yes, live, live. Yes. Ah. There it is. There. Did you get any answers, ma'am? Uh, so could you repeat? Repeat the question. Ship sails tomorrow. See, this will be very helpful for One. a teacher. Ha. Huh. one student no they are answering i will wait huh ship can be sold tomorrow says santosh patel hmm? harsha writes ship sale ship might be sold tomorrow mohammad shahid sales and sales s a l e s s a i l s no 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 shri lakshmi malya she say right ship will set sail tomorrow namrata satigeri she types the ship sails tomorrow ship okay sails. okay 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 let let is, me is the, uh, explain yes yes they they are asking is it uh, the word play sail sell see sail. this has something to do with grammar this has something to do with grammar Yeah. Okay. there is a word ship and sails you if you consider the ship as a verb you get a meaning and if you consider the ship as a noun you get another meaning so also when the ship is a verb sails become a uh, noun and when the sh word ship becomes a noun sails becomes the verb the first okay let me put it even more clearly the first one is an imperative sentence ship sails tomorrow i'm a uh, i have a factory i manufacture the sails s a i l sail you know 
the one that helps the ship uh, or the uh, boats to move by the force of the wind okay hai kannadadalli hai indare okay i i want that to be shipped you you can ship it by uh, a truck okay shipping is not uh, i mean it just only means transporting ship is not a ship in fact transport okay if i paraphrase this transport the sales tomorrow to your to your okay, okay, uh, okay. customers ship one yes, of the yes. meanings is transport the sales to the customers tomorrow the other meaning is the ship sails tomorrow it will embark it will leave the port tomorrow okay so yes. this is uh, this see when you have such ambiguous sentences you can give them the difference between the roles played by nouns and verbs in the sentence that way a teacher should have a lot of preparation get the appropriate examples and then he should experiment it on uh, with the students okay okay that's such mm, i i could uh, uh, recall many a times it is uh, you know communication is misunderstood yeah uh, once it so happened that a teacher went to the class she, he had overheard students talking using ya yeah, kam ya yeah, go ya yeah. mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. english we don't have it now we don't have acquire, it mm-hmm. yes how they acquire this uh, it's, it's influenced by the local languages yeah. mm-hmm. local languages influence of the local language and uh, uh, maybe influence of hindi also yaar yeah. hmm? yeah. yaar yaar um, yaar yeah, yeah. maybe kam yaar go yaar and all. so a teacher being very strict enough uh, about the language skills he told the uh, students uh, he came to the class actually he was a science teacher he came to the class and told the student see this is the wrong habit that you have cultivated and it is a wrong way of communicating hmm? you should not be using ya yeah after every sentence kam ya go ya what ya yeah, and all that it's not true. it's wrong so uh, cultivate a habit of speaking correct english the students were very quiet because this uh, strict teacher had noted their uh, way of uh, speaking english language they kept quiet and then the teacher turned to the board and uh, wrote ammonia and then he said well students <laughs> our next chapter is on ammonia immediately one of the students stood up and said sir just now you said that ya should not be used and you are ammonia. using ammonia it should be ammonia now this is this is the you know misunderstanding this is, yeah. this is called hyper correction hyper this is this okay. term is called hyper correction okay you okay. you try to you tend to make a correction where the correction is not necessary not necessary ha huh. too much yeah. of uh, being alert then the teacher had to tell them i am not using ya ya is there in the word itself so that is ammonia and it's not nice. ya so like this uh, as you said uh, being too much conscious also many a times make them come out with wrong english words and wrong english sentences so to yeah. correct this what is your tip sir what tips would you give Uh, for the student to speak correct english grammatically sentence structure and other things it is the exposure that you have okay. okay the more you learn the better you speak okay see what we usually do is when i come to know that you know kannada i will very conveniently stop shift speaking in english and we shift ah. to kannada that should not be done and ah. it is always better to have girlfriends because girls are more uh, sort of uh, um, uh, they they speak more english they usually don't do that boys do it boys usually uh, conveniently speak the local language while the girls still maintain that uh, and they usually speak in english see when you listen to chaste english all the time you will be catching it is it is 
like madhukara vritti just as a bee sucks uh, the nectar from each flower when you listen to people you catch a point here a word here a term there and you acquire it and internalize it and you use it when you uh, speak to others in english so uh, it's always good to have very uh, chaste reading, english i think yes reading more of no no reading. no i don't and think it is uh, because of reading the written text is more formal Okay. written text is more formal or if you read novels probably uh, yes. to some then extent you can class but if you read you will be acquiring only the standard what do you say the the uh, formal language huh. if you want to learn the informal language you should listen to uh, people or you must watch films hmm. watch films uh, and it's not just watching is listening when we uh, watch tv we should see the subtitles usually the english films have subtitles uh, in english only so yes. by the time you finish reading it they would have spoken you before finishing uh, reading the subtitle it would have gone the fluency the meaning everything you can get there uh, how well uh, how do you say uh, yes, yes yeah you have to listen the more yes. you listen the yes. better you speak because uh, personally and even email also we are getting from the students that is how to mm -hmm. better english now we are teaching them the skills and all that how to uh, bettering so what i feel is that to improve my english i have to improve my english this is the first thought is a very good yeah. thought encouraging thought so the urge should come from within that i must uh, correct speak meticulous english my english should improve yeah. i should keep speaking in it that is why we had first session on building confidence so remove yeah. the mental block that you cannot do it when you are very passionate and um, uh, give your 100% to it automatically you will get now here i am reminded of an anecdote uh, of uh, king martin luther when he was uh, a small boy of 6 years old you might have heard this sir uh, when he was 6 uh, years old uh, he was uh, in a fair uh, watching the balloon seller and the balloon seller was selling all colorful balloons he was filling the balloons with helium and then just leaving them in the sky high and they used to fly so this uh, young boy asked was very surprised will all color balloons fly now he belonged to a negro class he came from a poor family and the negroes and we know the apartheid system and all how they were crushed uh, exploited by the uh, english people by the americans so this boy wanted to know it is it uh, can we overcome this discrimination Uh, is it that only english people are superior and the negroes are inferior so he wanted to uh, find out this and as a young boy of 6 years old he was so he asked the balloon seller will all color balloons fly high in the sky the balloon seller said yes uh, will you try with that black color balloon the balloon seller said why not even that will and he filled helium in that black color balloon and uh, left it high in the sky and this black color balloon dancing joined the other colorful balloons flying high in the sky and it was equally in the line of the other colorful balloons now there is a message in this now the balloon seller told this boy see it is not the color nor the size of the balloon that takes it to the heights what we have to notice here is that what is there inside the balloon is more important that is whether we are tall whether we are short whether we are fat whether we are fair whether we are dark all these things are not important at all sometimes students have this mental block saying that i come from kannada medium telugu medium tamil medium that is why my english is no it's it's not uh, those are just the excuses so what is important is the inner spirit the inner strength that that uh, faith in yourself 
the confidence that you can do it and you will do it 100% will take you and help you to reach your goals and um, this anecdote i wanted to share with the students i remember later in his life this young boy uh, king martin luther he became the leader and uh, helped the negroes to get freedom i have a dream is a very famous uh, speech of uh, king martin luther students if you get time listen to that speech and you also learn so many public speaking skills from that speech how he keeps repeating repeating a particular word to have the needed impact on the people's mind so you could listen to videos you could listen to the videos of the great speakers uh, which will have an impact on your language also so it was a very enriching session of yours um the students logology i think many of them might have not even heard that word what it means what it refers to so you took them um uh, into the journey uh, into the realm of logology and uh, um, you know introduce them how interesting it is and language can be learned through logology also so i extend a heartfelt gratitude to you on behalf of the management of vivian uh, trust uh, chief executive for academics and administration principal and all the faculty members here at vivian degree college for being part of this national level uh, student development program and also sharing your knowledge with us uh, thank you thank you so much thank you thank you thank you thank you now uh, we are going to shortly start with the second session second session by professor dr maitri shinde is on time with us welcome you madam yes um, on behalf of management members chief executive for academics and administration principal all the faculty members at vivian degree college i extend a hearty welcome to professor dr maitri shinde to this national level student program student development program yes we'll just check the mm, screen sharing whether it is enabled or not yes now yesterday students yesterday we had a session on interview skills today second session we are going to have on self introduction in interviews first impression is the best impression you need to have an impact full effect on the interviewers so what are the preparations that a candidate has to do to present himself or herself presentable we have today a resource person joining us from hyderabad professor dr maitri shinde has around two decades of teaching experience for the undergraduates and post graduate students she has a rich experience in research and has several presentations and publications to her account she always keeps her busy in academic activities guiding the students taking up extra classes especially training the students in communication skills and uh, Uh, she has uh, participated in many national level and international level seminars and conferences and has presented her papers there her papers are also published in refer ugc referred journals she is a resource person at the telangana judicial academy and in various organizations of refuge 
the very best teachers, those who make education a rewarding, enriching, and even inspiring experience, do have certain qualities that set them apart from the other individuals. Professor Dr. Maitri Shinde has such qualities as she is a very committed teacher. Now for the second session on self-introduction in interviews will be taken by Professor Dr. Maitri Shinde. Over to Professor Dr. Maitri Shinde. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, thank you for that nice introduction. I was wondering how many students are there as participants here? Uh, actually, here on the screen, it shows 252. But those who have registered are also watching there. So usually, on an average, we have 1,600, 1,800 students. OK, because we have a list of just four people. So I was wondering, is it on? No, no. This is, this is Zoom platform. Through this, yeah. we go live. Hmm? This is only the IT coordinator and the resource person and okay. the anchor. Okay. Oh, yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank the you. Students so are watching the program. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for that nice introduction. I hope uh, I live up to that. Uh, so, today, uh, as ma'am has told you, that we will be talking about self introduction. Uh, why and when uh, self-introduction becomes very, very important. Now, as undergraduates, I'm sure uh, most of you must be undergraduate students or students in their teens and uh, uh, students who are, might be taking the other world or venturing the new world. Uh, self-introduction becomes very, very important, especially in terms of uh, uh, the formal context, whether you're seeking admission in a big university or seeking at, uh, seeking a placement in a company or, uh, you know, several other contexts where you have to introduce yourself. So this becomes, you know, uh, something where sometimes, you know, you uh, can differentiate between a formal context and an informal context and likewise design your self-introduction or likewise introduce yourself okay sometimes uh, in a formal context you become so very uh, what do we say uh, very very organized or very very uh, rigid uh, thinking that a self-introduction has to be this way and this is the model that we have to follow so on and so forth so this is there is a lot of subjectivity when we talk about self-introduction so i would like to begin my uh, presentation with a powerpoint screen sharing is enabled yes ma'am Okay, we have a first, I like this quote, be who you are and say what you want because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. Here, I want to talk about two things. One is, now look at the second part of the phrase, because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. Now, we are sometimes, especially in a formal context, what happens is we try to fumble or we become rigid. We become conscious that somebody is watching us, somebody is listening to us. So what is it that I have to speak? And if I introduce myself this way or that way, what would they think about me? What would you have several questions in your mind? You have several doubts. What will they uh, how will they brand me? Will they judge me? You know, these are the questions that really come to your mind or these are the apprehensions that come to our mind. Definitely, you know, you have certain apprehensions like, you know, if I'm introducing myself, what is it that I have to talk? How much should I talk? And 
what are the key areas that I have to be focusing on. Now, today we would be focusing basically on self-introduction in a formal context. You can take interview as the context, okay? Now, I've seen children or seen students when they introduce themselves in a, uh, uh, say, a freshers party or a farewell party. So when you're introducing there in a freshers party or a farewell party, you are so very organized. You are yourself. Right? You are more yourself. You are very, very organized. And, you know, you because you think that, you know, you have to create an image. You have to brand yourself amongst your uh, peer group or amongst your friends or amongst the classmates or you know you have a big set of students there watching you and uh, yeah you uh, you make all your preparations you buy a new dress you buy uh, the best shoes and you see to it that you begin with a coat you begin with uh, you know an interesting line about yourself and you are into it and you give your best introducing yourself i mean you you tend to forget that somebody is watching you and you build that confidence automatically, right? Now, a contrary context, when it comes to a professional setup, you are so very, or most of them are so very frozen or so very rigid, or, you know, they have several, several things in mind. If I speak like this, what will happen? If I speak like that, what will happen? And how much should I talk about my family? How much should I talk about my hobbies? Are my hobbies right? What I'm saying? Things like that. The same confidence what you had in an informal context, if you can carry forward the same thing here, you would be an amazing person. But... There are certain things to remember when you are introducing yourself in a formal context. So that's why, you know, when I began, when I thought, you know, we, uh, when I'm going to take a session on self-introduction, we will be talking mostly about this thing because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. Forget about thinking that people would judge you or there is an audience only to decide what you are, you are good or bad, you know, you are a worst person over there or you are a very skillful person over there. Give your best. Your focus or target should be something like give your best. Be yourself and give your best. And definitely you will be able to give your self-introduction to the first. Now, let me see. Let us move on to the next slide. Now, uh, when we spoke about a uh, formal context, now the apprehensions that you might have uh, is dif uh, is there a difference between a professional gathering and a social gathering? If so, what is the difference? And should your introduction be similar in both places, or should be there any kind of variations? Okay. Second apprehension could be, should your oral self-introduction reflect your CV exactly? Third one, can it have some variations? If so, what kind of variations? And last, what could be other interesting things you could add to make your, interest, make your introduction interesting? They have your CV in front of them, okay? When you attend an interview, the first question is introduce yourself. They have their CV in front of them. Despite having it, a bona fide document that's there before them, they want to listen from you. Okay? They want to listen what is it that you have to talk about yourself. Remember one thing, somebody who values oneself is the best and values other things as well, whether it's other people or workplace or work culture. Somebody who does not take pride in introducing oneself cannot take pride in doing anything in life. Okay, so have that belief in you that you are the best and you are going to give the best 
and automatically you wear a confidence you wear an attitude you wear positivity in you right now coming to the first question here is there a difference between introducing oneself in a professional gathering and a social gathering definitely the uh, just uh, a couple of minutes back when we said when you are there in a, a freshers party or you know when you are there uh, in another social gathering like you have accompanied your parents to a party or a, a gathering with your relatives or something of that sort you introduce yourself over there also but then there also you are quite shy right before relatives and things like that but then when you are there with your friends in a freshers party and things like that you are you know you have all the energy in you and you show excellent confidence but when it comes to a professional gathering you are kind of having a lot of lot of inhibitions as to how to introduce myself definitely these two contexts are different definitely you know what is needed by the listener on the other side is different you will not introduce yourself uh, saying that you did your projects and all in a social gathering when you are with your relatives or something of that sort right so each of these contexts are different and what needs to be talked about in each of these contexts is highly highly important that we should be taking care of okay so should your oral stuff uh, oral self introduction reflect your cv exactly now what is your cv and uh, i don't think i can interact with anybody uh, i cannot interact i think no if you ask any question and you want the answer from the uh, participants we can ask them to type in the chat box and give them 5 minutes they'll type in the chat box i'll take up the questions and give this okay that will be towards the end of it towards the end and in between also in case you need any response yeah i can yes. respond okay yes, yes. Yeah, you can type your uh, question you can type your answers to this kind of uh, question that i asked you should your oral self introduction reflect your cv exactly now are you making only one cv and that you will carry a cv say for a couple of years say Uh, you have graduated or you have post graduated you make a cv and then you will carry it forward for next two years or three years or five years down the line anything of that sort it's not like that your cv has to be updated definitely you will have a better version of a cv this year than you have had a cv last year right now when your cv is there with you what do you do your cv is job specific after as a fresher probably you make only one cv okay but then as you grow as you gain extra qualifications as you gain extra skills you would be upgrading your cv it's it, it is said that you know a cv has to be upgraded every 6 months every 6 months one has to upgrade his or her cv okay now in such context what are you doing you are upgrading your skills and what is what else are you doing you will prepare a cv that is job specific all cvs are not generic now cvs can be categorized into two one can be a generic cv another can be a specific cv what is a generic cv a cv a first timer a first timer makes a cv and you know he writes the whole lot of skills that he has he writes his hobbies he writes his weakness he writes his achievements and all that the first timer a fresh graduate who is applying for a job or who is applying for a university admission in a uni good university and things like that now as you move on okay you get an offer or you are sup supposed to apply for a job that uh, says that you are applying for a position in the finance field okay what will you do you would make certain changes in your generic cv and make it more inclined towards the new job requirement which means you would have specific skills specific 
inputs specific achievements specific hobbies reflected in the new cv that you are going to make for the finance job similarly you know if you are applying for a marketing job your orientation completely changes right you would be preparing a cv on a on the skills and the requirements that are need needed for a marketing job right you prepare a first cv and you are applying for a civil engineering job then what would you do you would definitely focus on what is it that a civil engineer needs and then how is it that i have to redesign my cv so when you are having so when we talk about when we come back to this question should your oral uh, self introduction reflect your cv exactly it need not be reflected exactly or 100% but you are not lying your cv is not lying keep in mind this is something very very important you are having in your cv about yourself about your skills about your hobbies about your achievements it does not reflect your friend be very careful it does not reflect your friend it does not reflect something from the internet because those words are nice you have it in your cv it's not like that be original that's why i said we start the st uh, slide with be original don't bother about what other are, others are thinking or what impact would happen or what would be the impact if i speak right be original but then when you are giving yourself introduction you can be at your creative best what does it mean that you can be at your creative best you can talk something that you have not given in your cv right imagine when campus recruitments happen the recruiters the hr people are interviewing 100 people 150 people 200 people in a sequence and do you think you know they would have the patience to listen to the same thing again and again again and again you know one after the other i am uh, uh, rahul i am doing my civil engineering i am from third year you know i have so and so skills these are my hobbies are listening to music reading books you know does anybody have the patience to listen to the same thing again and again he need not ask you to introduce yourself all that is already there in your cv he need not ask you again in, introduce yourself because all those inputs are those technical details are already there in your cv right so self introduction can be made interesting if you focus a little and introspect or have a self retrospection as to what i should write in a cv sorry in a self introduction right so that is where the question comes can it have some variations definitely it can have it will have variations because in your cv your cv it doesn't give for you know a column to write who is your role model what are your likes and dislikes and things like that right so you can definitely have variations in your self introduction what could be other interesting things you could add to make your introduction interesting this you can post in the chat box this question answers to this question what could be the other interesting things you could add to make your introduction interesting okay please post your answers now let's move on to the next slide yeah how different am i imperfection is beauty madness is genius and it's better to be absolutely ridiculous than absolutely boring what did i just share with you i mean when we have a, a kind of mock interviews and all in classes when we as a, when you have your peer mock interviews also going on i feel i see some of the students is really getting bored when the uh, other person is talking the same thing i am praveen i am doing my final years last semester are the and these are my hobbies 
so it is really really boring because you have been told that this is the structure and this is how you have to speak and this is these are the things that go into it okay so in now look at this uh, the beauty of the quote here imperfection is beauty madness is genius and it's better to be absolutely ridiculous than absolutely boring so be have the passion being ridiculous or being having that madness is talking about having some kind of passion and reveal or show that passion that you have in you that spark in you that fire in you okay so that is what marilyn monroe is telling over here and it's absolutely absolutely very very dull when somebody speaks like an automation okay rather than being boring and presenting ourselves what is already there in a the cv i mean that doesn't give you scope to go to the next level at all make your introduction as interesting as possible and that's the best way to start in fact if you give a, a good introduction probably that will lead you to the next round probably the smile that you carry the body language that you have you know the uh, interesting facts that you told about yourself in the self introduction could actually uh, lead you to the next round might impress the person sitting before you okay let's move on why is self introduction so important yes why do you think self introduction is so very important as i told you you know they need not ask you about yourself but uh, about you but then the, this is a first question this is a first question and the biggest question that will lead you to the next round you can they say that you know this can be a deciding uh, uh, question whether you can go to the next round or you cannot go to the next round now why is it that it's very important firstly to understand you and your skills to understand your attitude to understand specific skills to gauge your strengths to know if you are a team player okay now let's see one by one to understand you and your skills now what you have written in the cv and what you are are they matching that's very important they want to check what you have written you have written very very lofty words in your uh, cv i have perseverance i have great decision making skills i have you know the right attitude and things like that but then they want to understand whether you really have those skills whether you really own those skills so it becomes very very important to be original and to make sure that your cv reflects only you and not your neighboring uh, friend or something that's uh, reflected on the internet a model cv they see and then students tend to copy those words because they are interesting right to understand your attitude remember this is something a very very important key factor when we say attitude now attitude is taken as a misnomer people say that uh, you know she or he is arrogant and then they say she has attitude he has attitude what is attitude attitude can be positive attitude can be negative what is attitude yes the way we think the way we behave our ideas you know our thoughts reflect how we behave in a particular society and that is what is meant by attitude so our attitudes can be positive our attitudes can be negative positive attitude spread positive vibes negative attitude spreads negative vibes so it is for understanding your attitude also that they uh, tell you to introduce yourself to understand specific skills now you know they like your cv but then they want to understand that this is the kind of job that we have but we don't know if this person has those required skills in him or her or not so they might put you through a situation put you through a question to understand whether you have those skills or not okay to gauge your strengths 
Similarly, as I told you, you have written that these are your strengths, but you haven't written the context or you haven't written how did you un how did you get to know that you have those strengths. Okay, so you would have to give probably context or situations to uh, or you know reasons to validate that you have got those strengths. So in the coming slides, I will talk more on these strengths to know if you are a team player. Mind you, when we are going for a job, especially when we are uh, uh, when situations or the corporate world is asking about asking for people for uh, employees, they look for people who can work with other people, who can work with others. They don't want someone who are, you know, single players, right? They don't want somebody who is a single player. They want people to work along with others, along together with others. Only then the work can happen. Only then there can be coordination. Only then there can be communication passing. Only then there can be performance seen, right? Now next, to know your level of maturity, to understand seriousness of taking a job, to know your creativity, to understand your spontaneity to know your level of maturity. So maturity doesn't come with age. The most aged person cannot behave, may not be matured enough, may not display maturity. Maturity absolutely doesn't, it has no, it's, it's, it's not proportionate with the age, right? Somebody who does not have, uh, you know, great experience also can be thinking maturely, can display maturity. Right? Somebody who is very, very aged may not be able to handle a situation with the, the uh, amount of maturity that is needed. Okay? So self-interaction, when they see you talk or when they see you speak, they, all, they also gauge your level of maturity. Whether the person is hyperactive, active, overconfidence, confident, is he able to or is she able to speak with a level of maturity, is he or she balanced? So that's very important for them to understand. To understand seriousness of taking a job, to understand whether you really are looking for a job or is it, you know, that you just have some kind of, uh, uh, you just are trying whether you can crack an interview or not, but you have some other plans in your mind to take up a business or to go abroad or so on and so forth. To know your creativity, for example, there might be certain jobs where, you know, they need creative thinking. It needs, it demands creativity. So they might put you in very, very petty situations to understand how creative you are. For example, suppose I say, can you draw a triangle with two lines? Can you draw a triangle with two lines? Outrightly, you will say no. Triangle is with three lines. How can somebody draw a triangle with two lines? So this is something that you are not thinking out of the box, or you give a, you know an impulsive answer. So that is not what they're looking for. Can you really think intelligently, creatively, and then give an answer? That's very important to understand your spontaneity. As I told you, they might put you in situations which might ask for a spontaneous reaction. How would you react? And whether that reaction was apt or right in that particular context. Okay, that is why self-introduction becomes important for them. Okay, now let's move on to the slide which talks about the tips to remember while we give self-introduction. Now this, again, this is only for the sake of someone who does not understand absolutely how to go about. So this is the basic framework that I have given you because I'm supposed to give you a framework, especially in a formal context, but then you can, I mean, this is also not in an order. You need not say that this is the order and I have to follow it this way you can make your introduction as interesting as possible. Start with anything, 
you can start you can put hobbies first you can put family background last you can uh, save your achievements first and then you can talk about your hobbies it's absolutely your take because it is your self introduction for example you know somebody is sold in the market what happens when somebody something has to be sold in the market what happens the marketing person or the advertisement that we see in the media it talks great things about the product whether the product is good or bad or useful or not useful that's a secondary question but a useless product also is made to be you know is marketed in such a way that you know we are so impressed by it and then we tend to buy or we tend to get convinced that maybe this is a good one and then we have to try so what are they doing they are talking about the qualities of a particular object right the qualities of the object that they want to sell right in self introduction also you are doing nothing but you are selling your skills or selling your credentials it's nothing but selling yourself selling your skills or selling your credentials so how you sell yourself is in your hands how you sell yourself is absolutely up to you and decide how best you can sell yourself how creatively you can do it how creatively you can package yourself so that you know the other person feels that you know he or, he or she is the best person we can recruit and hence we'll recruit him or her right so this is a structure that i have uh, you know given there you begin with your name family background educational qualifications uh, achievements hobbies now how do most of them introduce themselves myself pramod my name is pramod hello i'm pramod what is the best way to introduce oneself is it myself pramod right most of the youngsters make this mistake myself avinash this is wrong this is not the way to introduce yourself i am avinash i am avinash or my name is avinash my name of my name is avinash sounds a little more childish you can say i am avinash okay family background how much should you talk about your family it need not be at length it's just to mention what your parents are how many siblings you have perhaps you can mention their you know what they're doing your educational qualifications right beginning from the last qualification that you have acquired till the schooling so you will go in the reverse order achievements what you have achieved your hobbies achievements and hobbies these are the key areas which are which is uh, you know which are very very important that uh, either in a cv or in a self introduction these are the key areas that actually decide your next level whether you can go to the next level or not so let's move on to the next slide strengths you will talk about your strengths what your strengths are i will uh, uh, give you an elaborate we'll have an elaborate discussion on what strengths should be to be talking in the next slides to come your weakness technical qualifications your projects undertaken okay so as i told you we'll look into the latest slides for strengths weakness you can say what are what could be your weakness weakness need not be your actual weakness weakness should be told in such a way that will not affect your work that may not affect the company's work okay so a weakness should be something that for example i say that you know my weakness is my weakness is hogging on a lot of chocolates or my weakness is you know i sleep late so this having a lot of chocolates or i sleep late may or may not have a serious impact on my work 
so do you did you understand what am i talking about don't reveal your actual weakness so that to be on the safe side do not ever reveal your actual weakness you cannot say that i am very lazy i cannot finish things in time i keep postponing things your actual weakness you cannot ever mention that then if you have any kind of other technical qualifications qualifications other than your degree or you know other than uh, could be any kind of a diploma program or a certificate course which you have done parallelly accord along with your undergraduate or what whatsoever projects undertaken this can actually add a lot of value to your self intro and also to your cv if you have done projects please mention it but the project should be genuinely done definitely not a cut copied paste material a project is definitely a mini research so if you have carried or pursued a mini research you can definitely add it over there it validates uh, or it adds a lot of value to your cv and also to your self introduction social activities likes and dislikes role model and career goal you can also add things like this social activities is something that's very very um, you know need of the hour or this happens to be for example now these days we are talking about corporate social responsibility every company is into csr now what is this corporate social responsibility every employee is supposed to be indulged in some kind of community service or the other right now in some companies the company itself has a policy of csr okay and in some companies uh, they expect their uh, uh, employees to get indulged in some kind of csr activity or some kind of social activity outside but as a student you definitely have opportunities at your college level either through your nss or you know through kind of uh, the number of ngos that you have around and your visits and uh, uh, now and then uh, celebrations or observing certain days of importance and what was your role played during that particular day becomes important to understand whether you are a person who has the quality of empathizing with the society or empathizing with the people around you or not so definitely social skills or social activities becomes an important factor now likes and dislikes what are your likes and what are your dislikes you can make your i told you your uh, self introdu uh, introduction interesting by adding your likes and dislikes okay then your role model you can talk about who your role model is and why do you consider a particular person a role model and then you can definitely add what your career goal in life is and substantiate reasons why you have those career why you have that career goal and how is it that you are going to attain that or what is your you know execution plan to reach that particular career goal so these are the tips okay now i want to focus on particular things especially you know hobbies or pastime activity and uh, uh, strengths because these are some important fa key factors that you have to remember while introducing yourself now what is the difference between a hobby and a pastime activity if you can uh, post your answers in the chat box it would be very very interesting we can actually have a discussion on that most of you confuse between a pastime activity and a hobby what is a hobby a hobby is something you are interested in doing and you hone a particular skill while you are doing it over a period of time you invest time you in sometimes people invest money you invest time you invest money and you pursue it with lot of interest 
okay and you see a tangible growth in you okay while a past time activity we, when we discuss a past time activity is entirely different listening to music you say reading books you say what are your, when somebody asks you what are your hobbies people say are reading uh, uh, books and listening to music what kind of music in the next question might be what kind of music do you listen you don't have an answer because you listen to music randomly at random you have no clue what genre of music that is who is the singer what kind of music is that and things like that listening to uh, reading books you say most of the students make this mistake listening to music and uh, reading books okay reading books what is the latest book that you have read you have no answer or you talk about some textbook that you have read can that be a hobby reading a textbook can be a hobby reading a textbook is a mandate a subject textbook you are reading it's a mandate okay so there is definitely a difference between a past time activity and a hobby and please understand that hobbies give you a certain amount of you know uh, certain tangible skills so that you uh, this, that's very very uh, apparent or outwardly seen in your personality okay so have hobbies now see these three key points have hobbies that fetch you money have hobbies that can keep you in shape have hobbies that can be creative if you can have some hobbies like this then you can be the best manager of your own life you are managing yourself you are managing your life excellently okay so somebody's hobby if that turns into a profession and that profession is giving he more her money then excellent nothing like it for example somebody is interested in you know uh, taking short films somebody is interested in taking short films that's his hobby that's he been his passion right and eventually what he does he takes short films and you know uh, posts his short films here and there in certain competitions and all that and then he tries to get an edge above the others and the same hobby if he takes it as a profession in his future definitely i mean he, if he takes it as a profession and definitely that will fetch him money and something that is giving him 100% satisfaction mind you not everyone is doing especially to earn money what one likes one is doing out of compulsion most everyone does or most of them do it out of compulsion but very few get an op opportunity to pursue their passion their own passion becomes their profession nothing like it if something happens like that nothing like like it if your passion and your profession can collate it's the greatest thing that can happen to you so something to keep you in shape definitely your health that can be your hobby to keep you in help you go gymming you do exercising and things like that okay that is actually taking care of your mental health and your physical health have a hobby that makes you creative a mind that is sleeping is dead a mind that is not thinking is dead so have a hobby that instills your creativity instills your creative spirits if that is there it said you know that human mind is so very it has so much of potential but we use just a percentage of it imagine when man is able to do so much with using just a fraction of the potential imagine what would happen if he is using at least if not 100% a bigger percentage of it i think we can do excellent we can excel in life like anything we can do great things we can achieve great things probably we would have you know uh, outbeated corona long back right so okay 
it's sad that you know i cannot see your responses now next strengths as i told you we will be discussing strengths at a uh, to a greater extent because this needs some kind of uh, uh, more uh, focus now strengths can be internal they can be external now what are internal strengths what are external strengths now somebody when you know we ask them what are your strengths sometime people say my mother is my strength my uncle is my strength my brother is my strength is it wrong yes you can have them mentioned as your strengths but differentiate what strengths are those and and uh, what category you can add them as strengths strengths can be internal they can be external what could be internal strengths could be your skills yes the skills that you have honed over a period of time for example you are uh, hard working you have good decision making capacity you are a good team manager you are a good team player you you know you have great communication skills all those are skills which are your internal strengths what are external strengths strengths like people people can be strengths qualification can also be can be counted as external strengths okay so try to understand when and how we should be talking about internal and external strengths now moving on i want to discuss more on this particular uh, uh, slide this is called the johari window generally when we write our uh, uh, resume or a cv we focus on this how to understand what our strengths are i hope we have time okay now this is a johari window uh we have four windows if you can see open self the blind self the hidden self and the unknown self what is the open self information about you that you know and the world around you knows that is the open self okay i am hard working i know about it and even the people around me know about it my family knows my you know my colleagues know now the blind self information about you that you don't know but others know about you it might happen that you know you do not know certain areas of your strengths and others have seen it you have been blind to it okay for example now who would know that these strengths you have it can be your close associates it has to be your close associates could be your parents your immediate family or could be your friends who are in coordination with you or who are in touch with you on a regular basis right so they would have seen that you know this person if this kind of work is given to him or her or if this if this problem is told to this person he or she would be able to solve it so he has great problem solving skill that skill you know you have but you know you did not actually give a thought about it you are blind to it so that is a blind self now second third one is the hidden self what is a hidden self information that you know about you you have but the others don't know say for example you have a passion for singing you have a passion for singing that you have realized later part in your life so what do you do you sing you hone you practice singing and you know eventually you learn that okay but people around you don't know that you are also a good singer so that is something that you know but the other world does not know blind self is you don't know the other world knows it right hidden self is something you know but the others do not know the unknown self information that neither you know nor the others know okay information that you and the others also do not know and this comes only with some kind of exposure to the outside world it cannot come you know when you are confined to your comfort comfort zone if you say that no i am going to sit only in the classroom or i am going to stick to only this job i do not have to do anything beyond that you will not know this potential in you 
okay so whenever you are talking about strengths or whenever you have to write strengths in your cv or in your self introduction do an analysis on these lines then you will be able to understand what your strengths are don't just pick words which are there what others have written or don't just pick words because those words sound interesting now the follow the star technique now this is something very interesting now when you say these are your strengths how is it that you have decided that these are your strengths you have you know good decision making skills suppose some you have told to the interviewer that mm, i have uh, good decision making skills now this is a very very simple and easy strategy to follow star technique what is a star technique understand what the situation is tell them what was the situation when you have decided when this kind of a skill of yours was uh, shown or it came to surface okay suppose you have told that you are you are good at decision making skills what was the situation when you had to take a good decision and that showed you good result okay that is a situation what was a task that you were indulged in okay what is a specific task that you have taken up what was the achievement because of the task that you took up and what achievement you have got and then finally the result what is the outcome personally and what is the outcome overall for example you say i have good team management skills okay the situation could be you have organized an event in your college you have organized a commerce event right the task was given to you to you know take care of poster presentations that was a task so you communicate with people you you know allocate work you tell them you define the rules and things like that your achievement you were able to achieve not that you have got the best prize in poster presentation but you coordinated with so many people you wrote rules you conducted the event and then the ultimate result was what learning you know you have got and what was the impact of your your learning to the outside world okay so if you can follow the star technique nothing like it so i think uh, we are almost done do we have a time madam still yeah five minutes okay so i just wanted to show you one more uh, uh, model i mean a couple of sample uh, introductions where you can actually say whether those introductions ka huh. one second now look at these sample introductions we have a couple of them and then you can say whether these introductions or you can judge for yourself if these introductions are interesting or not i can read them one or two for you my name is dinesh kumar i am from hyderabad i have completed my graduation from av college i have completed my intermediate from new era junior college and schooling from ekalavya school coming to my family background we are four in family including me my father my mother and sister my hobbies are playing cricket watching tv and listening to music my strengths my confidence and i'm self motivated my weaknesses i trust people easily it's all about me thank you for giving my this opportunity would you be interested in listening to this kind of an introduction as a listener right does anything creative about you does anything interesting about you you know to uh, give a scope for the interviewer or the employer to recruit you or to get, take you to the next level definitely no now look here first of all i want to thank you want to say thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to introduce myself in front of you my name is supriya singh i belong to bihar but moved to jalandhar for the studies i have done my matric from one of the prestigious school in our country that is dav public school and i have done my 12th in commerce stream from the same school itself now i am pursuing my management course 
uh, from Punjab Technical University. I am so much dedicated to gain knowledge through practical work in the advertising and marketing field by joining your company. I am also interested in sports. Now, what is what are the flaws that you can see in this uh, in self introduction? Definitely, it is the English factor that uh, you can uh, that's very very glaring there. Apart from that. sounds very very unprofessional the way it is put up it is very very unprofessional there are quite a few errors in uh, the way the person has presented in terms of language in terms of connectivity in terms of you know what things to place and how to place them so it is continuing here i am also passionate to do exercise gym and yoga to keep myself fit and fine as joining any organization i believe in team management and working with a team leads to the path of organization growth in future coming to my short term goals i want to join a company where i could learn new things so these are the couple of few sample of, uh, uh, you know self introductions i thought i will show you so the are we uh, done ma'am i think it's time no the best best one a uh, good uh, example could you give the students yes ma'am i will just give you ha ah. yeah can you see this screen now no just a moment now i can i think you can yes, see here yes 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 see here look here good morning everyone i am pramod and i am from vizag my father is an engineer working with the indian railways and my mother is a homemaker i have two siblings a brother and a sister i hold a bachelor's degree in commerce from geetams university i did my schooling and intermediate studies from st joseph's high school and junior college accounting and finance have always interested me and i've decided to take up masters in business management and major in finance i am good at java and other accounting packages i also have a project to my credit and it proved to be a turning point in my life i learned to use my theoretical knowledge and apply while doing my project with a finance company i also had and edge over the others as i was asked to lead a team of five members my biggest strength is my go getter attitude and my optimism i realized this while i was a part of major college programs during my final year the graduation day that we celebrated for our outgoing batch was very resourceful one since i was in the organizing committee i had to take major decisions this proves that i am also good at making right decisions however i have to cope with time management as i postpone things at times i am trying to overcome following a proper schedule and maintaining a time log i am a great follower of ms dhoni his leadership skills amaze me after reading his biography i understood that hardships he went through become a cricketer for the indian team i love reading a lot of biographies and i have a good collection of them i also take up community service as i am associated with an ngo called help we take up regular teaching and mentoring programs for students in regular areas uh, in rural areas and interact with them this has built my morale and to look at the other side of life i am a fitness freak and practice gymming every day that's it thank you very much for a patient hearing and thank you very much students for a patient listening to me also so 
so now you can see the presentation is so very organized and covering all the important aspects of a person's personality beginning with the technical details you see how he has packaged his or her strengths and skills in the experiences that he has got so this is something that we should be talking about when we talk about our own self introduction so i think we can call it a day if you can uh, you know have this you can have it yeah thank you ma'am yes madam it was very informative very informative session because uh, yesterday they had interview skills and oh. um, they were wondering many uh, self introduction in interviews for one hour what is there and all but you have given a very good carry home message saying that if they work on self introduction i think they can reach uh, their goal very soon in their life and what you have suggested the students uh, is very meaningful and effective that is every 6 months they have got to upgrade their cv their profile every 6 month so if they work towards this so 6 months target what best they can do to themselves in the field of academics in the field of sports in the field of culture in the field of uh, social work and all this if they keep the target like this i think they would be upgrading their uh, profile and uh, they will have something to speak about some themselves so that is very very important um, and you also told the students that take pride in introducing yourself now you can take pride in introducing uh, yourself only when uh, you have uh, worked on it when you have achieved something you have done something and uh, then you will be proud to share it with somebody so these are the important lines which um, students have got to think seriously thank you so much um we are on time now to close the session on behalf of um, management members of of uh, vdn trust the chief executive for academics and uh, administration principal all the faculty members i extend a very hearty gratitude for spending your sparing your precious time with us it shows only your concern for the students to be the part of this national level student development program thank you so much madam for a very informative session thank you ma'am thank you thank you so much participants the link will be posted in the chat box you have got to give the feedback and then attempt the questions given there there are students who are asking us to conduct similar kind of student development or student enrichment programs and they are even suggesting some topics also like farmers and all so if you have anything like that so please mail your views to us and we'll see when we can take it up and reach you out also there is you can subscribe if you subscribe to this channel whatever student oriented activities are done at vvn degree college bengaluru will reach out to you and you can be one of the beneficiaries of that so students will take leave now so take care stay at home stay safe stay blessed always exactly at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning you have got to log in and you will have the sessions on tenses past tense present tense future tense the timeline which is very very important because many a times we commit mistakes or get confused which tense should be used can we use first present tense and past tense if it is a, a complex sentence all these confusions are there and uh, tomorrow two sessions we are going to have and doc professor dr bhanumati haran is going to handle these sessions so see you good luck have a pleasant day